Hello everyone and welcome to another Pyro Gaming video. A question that I get asked all the time is Bright Dust. How do you farm it? Is it farmable? How can I get a lot of it? How do I have so much of it? And so on. A lot of questions about Bright Dust. Bright Dust used to be pretty abundant. Anything that came from Eververse turned into Bright Dust when you dismantled it. That is no longer the case. Now we have quote unquote direct sources of Bright Dust that you can theoretically go farm, but uh yeah, let's 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 just go over all the ways to get bright dust in Shadowkeep. So first and foremost, let's talk about what Finchurch brought for us, and that is the gift of bright dust. You can get this randomly from opening one of the new Fond Memories engrams, and they come in small, medium, and large. Now, I'm not going to give you an exact nomination of how much bright dust comes in each one of those packages because I have not yet got one in Shadowkeep, so I don't know if they changed it, but I believe that prior to Shadowkeep, it was 250 Bright Dust for the small package, 500 for the medium, and either 750 or 1,000 for the huge gift of Bright Dust. Like I said, I don't know if those numbers are still accurate. You will also occasionally see little bundles offered for silver that contain quantities of Bright Dust. Now, these are guaranteed drops because you are actually spending real money. And to my knowledge, this is the only way to spend real money, AKA silver, to still get Bright Dust. So Eververse isn't going to be your best, most consistent source of farming Bright Dust, which is good because Eververse is a microtransaction vendor. Outside of Eververse, you have actual activities and bounties that you can go do to give you a set amount of Bright Dust each week. So let's take a look at those. Each week, Commander Zavala, Lord Shax, and the Drifter will offer you two weekly bounties. Each one of those bounties will give you a guaranteed 200 Bright Dust, so that is 400 from Vanguard, 400 from Crucible, and 400 from Drifter per character. That is 1,200 Bright Dust apiece. If you have three characters and you do all six of those bounties on all three characters, that is a guaranteed 3,600 Bright Dust each week that is relatively easy to go grind out. These weekly bounties are, without a doubt, your best source for Bright Dust. Now, each one of the three vendors that I just mentioned also offers these additional bounties. You can pick up five at a time, but you can always just come back and get more, and there is no cap to how many that you can do a day. These bounties cost 3,000 Glimmer apiece and reward you with 10 Bright Dust. Let's do some math. Let's say that you want 100 Bright Dust. You would have to do 10 of these bounties and spend 30,000 Glimmer. Let's say that you have full Glimmer. 250,000 Glimmer. You spend it all on these bounties. You would get 83 of these bounties and you would walk away with 830 Bright Dust for 250,000 Glimmer. In my opinion, those additional bounties are not worth farming specifically for Bright Dust. If you're going for XP for your artifact and you want to get a little bit of extra Bright Dust, by all means, go for it. But in my opinion, the cost does not reflect the reward. Now, those are what you call the staples. Those are the permanent additions to the game that it seems like is going to be our sources for Bright Dust going forward in the next couple of seasons. However, we are currently, at the time of recording this video, in the middle of the Dawning update. The Dawning is a live event, and during this event, we have an additional source of Bright Dust. And it works just like Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit and that is over at Eva Levante. Now, a quick disclaimer, I have not yet completed one of her weekly bounties, but I have to assume that completing one of these weekly bounties will reward you with 200 Bright Dust, just like Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit. Uh, that said, this is potentially 1400 Bright Dust if you count all four of the vendors and do both bounties each week. Uh, in addition to that, she also offers farmable ones, and again, I haven't completed any of these, but I have to assume that it's like the other ones where you spend 3000 Glimmer and in return, you get 10 Bright Dust. So during the dawning, while the dawning is active, if you do both weekly bounties from Eva Levante, both bounties from Shax, both bounties from Zavala, and both bounties from Drifter, you can get 1600 Bright Dust per character per week. If you multiply that 1,600 Bright Dust per character times all three of your characters, you are getting 4,800 Bright Dust per week. That is optimal farming for Bright Dust. It really and truly is. I would definitely take advantage of it this season during the dawning. Go ahead and sprinkle in a couple of those additional bounties. If you do 20 of those, 
you are grinding out 5,000 Bright Dust each week while the donning is active. It's also worth mentioning that this Bright Dust during events is something that Bungie plans on continuing doing down the road. Once the donning is over, we will not have a live event in January, but in February, Crimson Days will return, and Bungie has already announced that Crimson Days bounties will reward Bright Dust, similar to the donning bounties right now. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Those are all of your ways to get Bright Dust. I would definitely recommend taking advantage of the dawning bounties while you can. And that is going to bring this video to an end. Drop a comment box below. Let me know what you are doing to farm Bright Dust. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed this one, click like. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, I fucking love you. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.